and you saw Ava and her friends playing in the street, not, not Ava, I'm sorry, the Hembrys' children, Ava's former friends, playing in the street, and that's what gave you the conclusion that they had come onto your porch and taken Ava's present. Isn't that how you get there? Mm, I don't remember them playing in the street, but I, I, I don't directly remember that, no. Right, I'm going to show stage one, and I'm going to give you a read. Oh, actually, it's up there. Okay. So Ava's present is taken, and that's on the third. Okay. That is delivered, right? Okay, yes. Is it? Yes, yes, it is. I'm sorry. All right. So sometime after the third, the next day, you find out that the present was actually delivered, and you advise this friend, we didn't get it. Right. Um, and it's at that point you tell your husband, Mr. Woodward, I think the Hembrys took it. Right? Yes. Okay. And that sets your husband off, right? In what way do you mean, though, set him off? That upset him. It upset him. Right. And your husband, he's, he's quick to anger, right? Mm. It depends on the circumstances. Okay, we'll get to that. Let's, you recognize stage one on the screen? Yes. Can you identify your home back in September of, two, well, August and September of 2012? It's the top button. Okay. It? And if you need to stand, we can ask the court's okay. permission. Yeah. You, you believe that's your home there? All right. Well, here's. Hold on. Here's oh, wait. Here I mean, it is. That's the wrong. That's my house. All right. All right. <laughs> and in relation to your house, where do the crows live? They live in this house right here. Okay. And the Hembrys? That would be this one. And the Blakes. Okay. And during that time in August of 2012. Living with the Hembrys was also Roger Picor, is that correct? Yes. And Kimberly Cast, right? Yes. And up until this point in time, everybody got along, right? Uh, yes, for the most part. Your kids played with their kids in the street, right? They played together. You didn't want them in their house, right? No, they played in my house. No, I meant in their house. Oh, no, I had put a stop to that. Right, but they, they were still allowed to play together, and they, were, they did that. Yes. Right? And then the fifth happens. What happens on the fifth? When, after the... Right, so you tell your husband that you believe that the Hembrys' eight-year-old daughter stole her present, mm -hmm. and your husband goes over and confronts Mr. Hembry, Right. Yes. And he's angry, right? He was upset. Okay. And at that point, he goes over there and basically accuses Mr. Hembry without any evidence, Mr. Hembry's daughter without any evidence, of stealing his daughter's present, his being Mr. Woodward's present, daughter's present. Mm, that's not my understanding of it. Okay. Were you there? No, I was inside the house. Okay. That's the first time he goes over, right? That's the politely going over and telling Mr. Hembry... Give me my daughter's present back, right? It's my understanding he asked. Okay. And then he comes home, right? Yes. And then he calls the police. Mm -hmm. And he wants the police there because he himself and you acknowledge that Mr. Woodward is quick-tempered. And if the police are there, he won't act unreasonable, right? He's less likely to snap. I don't, that's not my understanding of why he asked them to go. Okay. So the police are called, but they come, right? They did come, yes. And at that point, he goes over there again with the police now and accuses Mr. Hembry's daughter of theft. Mm, I believe so. I, I did not hear the whole conversation. And then the police talk to everyone, right? Yes. And your husband goes home. 
Yes. And then your husband goes over again, doesn't he? He goes back into the street and yells at Gary and tries to get Gary to come in the street to fight him. Isn't that true? I don't believe that was a third time. Okay. When was that? Because that's the moment in time that your husband is accused of having a, a firearm, right? Yes, but I don't believe it was, I don't believe he came home and went back. Maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. Okay. Well, the police left, right? And then came back again. Do you remember? I'm trying to. Um... I will. S I believe yes. I believe they did leave and then come back. <clears throat> They came back because the Hembrys called. Right. Right. Okay, that makes sense, yes. Right, because your husband was standing in the street trying to get Gary to come fight him. Okay. Right? That happened, right? Yes, that happened. And Gary said, no, come in my yard. I'm not going in the street, right? Yes. All right, so that was the fifth. That's what starts this. downturn in relationships, right? Okay. okay. And the, everything that's revolving around that is this belief that Mr. Hembry is taking pictures of your chickens and is going to report them, right? Wait, can you back up and repeat that? Right. The so on the 5th, what we, what, we've, what we believe is going on on the 5th at this point, all right, or what we've heard is that there's an accusation that Mr. Hembry's eight-year-old daughter stole Ava's present, right? Okay. So... Sustained. Let's, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Do you know that on the 5th, there's a confrontation between your husband and Mr. Hembry about Ava's present? Yes. The police are called, right? Okay, yes. Okay, um, yes? <laughs> yes, they were. I'm sorry. The police were called. Mr. Hembry comes out and takes pictures of your chickens, right? Yes. Okay. Your husband gets really upset by that. Yes. He runs out, and that's when he begins threatening Mr. Hembry and trying to get him to fight him, right? Yes. Okay. And that starts this back and forth between the houses at that point, right? Yes. The, the next event that you, I believe you talked about was interactions between the kids and the kids being Ava and the Hembry, Picior, Blake children, right? Or I guess it's just the Hembry and the, the Blake children, right? Is that right? Is that the next thing I talked about? Right. Well, we, we discussed that your children had gotten along up until this point. There were incidences before that with the children. And, but they played together. Um, they did play together up until several weeks before her birthday. Okay. The, the girls had started bullying her before that. And... I'm sorry, excuse me. You were asked on direct examination if you had a conversation with Ms. Cast about her children's behavior towards your daughter. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And you had said that her response to that was to immediately yell at her children to make them stop. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And then you, a few minutes later, you said actually her response was or she changed her position completely to now I want my children to torment your children, basically. There were two separate conversations. But you had forgot about the second conversation, right? 
um, an hour ago when I was right. Being, yes, I had forgotten. But you remember it now. Oh yes. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, that event that happened on the 5th. So let's get a little more specific. Can you identify on States 1 where that occurred? The, after the photographs are taken of your chickens and your husband runs out there in anger and begins trying to get Mr. Hembry to fight, fight him. where does that happen? Can you identify on there? was around this area here. So on Smith, it was on Smith, it wasn't on Lane. Right. And it was more in front of the Hembry residence. Mm, yes, then in, in relation to my house, yes. Right. The, so from the fifth on, the type of conduct that you were experiencing was basically yelling. You had bad neighbors. Right? Um, yes, there was more than yelling, but yes. So obscenities up until you said, I'm a, I'm a little confused. There was a threat towards to have someone sodomize your daughter. Right? That happened. We heard that, actually. Mm -hmm. When was that? That was after the injunction hearing. And the injunction hearing was when? Was it, I believe it was the 11th. Okay. But you're not positive on that. Um, I, positive, I can't remember. When I'm was... Sorry. When do you believe the injunction hearing was in relation to the shooting? Mm. Oh, a couple of weeks? Okay. I believe it was a couple of weeks. But as you sit here today, 2018, you're not sure on that? Well, I didn't bring my notes. Okay. All right. The... If I told you the injunction hearing was on the 29th of August, would you say that that was right or wrong? I would say that is not correct. And you saw Ava and her friends playing in the street. Not, not Ava, I'm sorry. The Hembrys' children, Ava's former friends, playing in the street, and that's what gave you the conclusion that they had come onto your porch and taken Ava's present. Isn't that how you get there? No, I don't remember them playing in the street, but I, I, I don't directly remember that, no. Right, I'm going to show states one, and I'm going to give you a link. Or actually, it's up there. Okay. So, Ava's present is taken, and that's on the third. Okay. That is delivered, right? Okay, yes. Is it? Yes, yes, it is. I'm sorry. All right. So sometime after the third, the next day, you find out that the present was actually delivered, and you advise this friend, we didn't get it. Right. Um, and it's at that point you tell your husband, Mr. Woodward, I think the Hembrys took it. Right? Yes. Okay. And that sets your husband off, right? And what way do you mean, though, set him off? That upset him. It upset him. Right. And your husband, he's, he's quick to anger, right? Mm. It depends on the circumstances. Okay, we'll get to that. Let's, you recognize stage one on the screen? Yes. Can you identify your home back in September of, two, well, August and September of 2012? It's the top button. You okay. Got and if you need to stand, we can ask the court's okay. permission. Yeah. You, you believe that's your home there? All right. Well, here's. Hold on. Here's Lane. Oh, wait. Coming here it is. Right. That's the wrong. That's my house. All right. All right. <laughs> and in relation to your house, where do the crows live? They live in this house right and the Hembrys? That would be this one. And the Blakes. Okay, and during that time in August of 2012, living with the Hembrys was also Roger Picor. Is that correct? Yes. And Kimberly Cast, right? Yes. 
And up until this point in time, everybody got along, right? Uh, yes, for the most part. Your kids played with their kids in the street, right? They played together. You didn't want them in their house, right? No, they played in my house. No, I meant in their house. Oh, no, I had put a stop to that. Right, but they, they were still allowed to play together, and they, were, they did that. Yes. Right? And then the fifth happens. What happens on the fifth? When, after the... Right, so you tell your husband that you believe that the Hembree's eight-year-old daughter stole her present, mm -hmm. and your husband goes over and confronts Mr. Hembree, right? Yes. And he's angry, right? He was upset. Okay. And at that point, he goes over there and basically accuses Mr. Hembree without any evidence, Mr. Hembree's daughter without any evidence, of stealing his daughter's present, his being Mr. Woodward's present, daughter's present. Mm, that's not my understanding of it. Okay. Were you there? No, I was inside the house. Okay. That's the first time he goes over, right? That's the politely going over and telling Mr. Hembree, give me my daughter's present back, right? It's my understanding he asked. Okay. And then he comes home, right? Yes. And then he calls the police, mm -hmm. and he wants the police there because he himself and you acknowledge that Mr. Woodward is quick-tempered. And if the police are there, he won't act unreasonable, right? He's less likely to snap. Mm, I don't, that's not my understanding of why he asked them to go. Okay. So the police are called, but they come, right? They did come, yes. And at that point, he goes over there again with the police now and accuses Mr. Hembree's daughter of theft. Mm. I believe so. I, I did not hear the whole conversation. Okay. And then the police talk to everyone, right? Yes. And your husband goes home? Yes. And then your husband goes over again, doesn't he? He goes back into the street and yells at Gary and tries to get Gary to come in the street to fight him. Isn't that true? I don't believe that was a third time. Okay. When was that? Because that's the moment in time that your husband is accused of having a, a firearm, right? Yes, but I don't believe it was, I don't believe he came home and went back. Maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. Okay. Well, the police left, right? And then came back again. Do you remember? I'm trying to. Um... I will. S I believe yes. I believe they did leave and then come back. They came back because the Hembrys called. Right. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Yes. Right. Because your husband was standing in the street trying to get Gary to come fight him. Okay. Right? That happened, right? Yes, that happened. And Gary said, no, come in my yard. I'm not going in the street, right? Yes. All right. So that was the fifth. That's what starts this downturn in relationships, right? Okay. okay. And the... Everything that's revolving around that is this belief that Mr. Hembree is taking pictures of your chickens and is going to report them, right? Wait, can you back up and repeat that? Right. The so, on the 5th, what we, what, we've, what we believe is going on on the 5th at this point, all right, or what we've heard, is that there's an accusation that Mr. Hembree's 8-year-old daughter stole Ava's present, right? Okay. So... Let's, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Do you know that on the 5th, there's a confrontation between your husband and Mr. Hembree about Ava's presence? Yes. 
The police are called, right? Okay, yes. Okay, um, yes? <laughs> yes, they were, I'm sorry. The police were called. Mr. Hembry comes out and takes pictures of your chickens, right? Yes. Okay. Your husband gets really upset by that. Yes. He runs out, and that's when he begins threatening Mr. Hembry and trying to get him to fight him, right? Yes. Okay. And that starts this back and forth between the houses at that point, right? Yes. Okay. The... The next event that you, I believe you talked about was interactions between the kids and the kids being Ava and the Hembry, Picior, Blake children, right? Or I guess it's just the Hembry and the, the Blake children, right? Is that right? Is that the next thing I talked about? Right. Well, we, we discussed that your children had gotten along up until this point. There were incidences before that with the children. And, but they played together. Um, they did play together up until several weeks before her birthday. Okay. The, the girls had started bullying her before that. And I'm sorry, excuse me. You were asked on direct examination if you had a conversation with Ms. Cast about her children's behavior towards your daughter. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And you had said that her response to that was to immediately yell at her children to make them stop. Is that right? That's correct. And then you, a few minutes later, you said actually her response was, or she changed her position completely to, now I want my children to torment your children, basically. There were two separate conversations. But you had forgot about the second conversation, right? Um, an hour ago when I was... Right. Being, yes, I had forgotten. But you remember it now? Oh, yes. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, that event that happened on the 5th. So let's get a little more specific. Can you identify on States 1 where that occurred? The, after the photographs are taken of your chickens and your husband runs out there in anger and begins trying to get Mr. Hembry to fight, fight him. where does that happen? Can you identify on there? was around this area here. So on Smith, it was on Smith, it wasn't on Lane. Right. And it was more in front of the Hembry residence. Mm, yes, then in, in relation to my house, yes. Right. The, so from the fifth on, the, type of conduct that you were experiencing was basically yelling. You had bad neighbors, right? Um, yes, there was more than yelling, but yes. So obscenities, up until you said, I'm a, I'm a little confused, there was a threat towards to have someone sodomize your daughter. Right? That happened. We heard that, actually. Mm -hmm. When was that? That was after the injunction hearing. And the injunction hearing was when? Was it, I believe it was the 11th. But you're not positive on that. Um, I, can pause it. I can't remember. When, was, when do you believe the injunction hearing was in relation to the shooting? Mm. Oh, a couple of weeks? Okay. I believe it was a couple of weeks. But as you sit here today, 2018, you're not sure on that. Mm. Well, I didn't bring my notes. Okay. All right. The... If I told you the injunction hearing was on the 29th of August, would you say that that was right or wrong? I would say that is not correct. Okay. Maybe I could show you something that would help you 
Remember that. I approach the witness? You may. I'm sorry. You recognize that? Oh, okay. Is this is the paperwork from the hearing? Okay. Okay. Does that refresh your memory that the injunction hearing was actually on the 29th of August? I really thought it was earlier than that, but okay, it says 29th of August. But the, the injunction hearing is important, right? Because that's the day that, in your mind, and it got worse after that point, right? So did yes. the, the threat to sodomize your daughter happen before or after the injunction hearing? It happened after the injunction hearing. And that was recorded on your surveillance system? No, I'm wrong. That's incorrect. Okay. Actually happened the 11th. Does that sound right? That's what I'm thinking of. That's what happened on the 11th because that is what prompted us to seek help from the court. Petition for the injunction. Right? Yes. And the, the Blakes, the Hembrys, they filed an injunction against you as well. Right? Against me? Well, against your husband. Okay. Right? Yes, they did. Okay. And both injunctions were denied. They were. And it's after that hearing that your husband attacks Mr. Hembry. Right? Are you talking about at the court parking lot? Yes. Okay. Let's go back to the the eleventh. The you remember that day? Yes. Okay. Um, and that seems to be the day that sticks in your mind because of the statement made by the the women, right? Yes. And do you know who said it? Oh yes, I do. Who said it? It was Carrie who said it. And when that interaction happened, where were you at? Standing in my yard. And where were you at before that? Well, I was in my house before people were arguing. I'm not sure what you're getting at. You were in your kitchen, right? Okay. And you were looking out your window, and you saw William Francis Woodward walking over to Mr. Hembry. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. Is there something that could potentially refresh your memory of that? You took notes around this time, right? You just showed me notes, but I don't remember writing them. Let me, I'm going to ask that you read that section down there. What? Oh, the Saturday one? Right. And tell me if you... Do you want me to read it out loud? No, no, no. I oh, want okay. you to read it to yourself and tell me if that refreshes your memory as to the events that occurred on the 11th of August, 2012. Are you, is there a question pending? Are you still asking her to refresh her recollection? I need to know, I, I just need to know, Ms. Woodward, if, if your memory has been refreshed as to the events that occurred on August 11th, 2012. I am comfortable with the events. I'm uncomfortable committing to a date. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. I want to be sure that you're testifying 
from your memory, okay? So on the 11th, or the date that <coughs> this obscenity, this vulgarity, was slung at your family, isn't it true that prior to that happening, Mr. Woodward Sr., William Francis Woodward, your father-in-law, went over to the Hembrys and that told them... That is not correct. I'm sorry. That's not correct. When no. did that happen? My father-in-law is not the one who went over there. Who went over there? It was a neighbor. Who's that? It was a neighbor named William. Okay. Who? Who? William who? Um, Smith. I believe okay. his name is Smith. And you, you observed this, and your husband was involved in this, was he not? He was not involved in that, no. Not involved in that, but he, he made himself involved. He was walking his dog, right? He was walking the dog. Right. And the neighbor was telling the Hembrys to get out, leave the neighborhood. Yes, he did. And you went out there, and you told your husband to come inside. I did. Right. And he didn't, did he? He did not. Right. Um, he gave you the dog, and he stayed out there. Yes. And he proceeded to get in an argument with Roger Picor, right? Uh, with Roger specifically, I don't, I'm not positive well, about that. With, but with one of them. Yes. And when he got in that argument, he basically told him, I'm not afraid of you. You're scared of me. And they went back and forth, right? Yes. Okay. And it's at that point that the vulgarities start getting slung back and forth. The threat towards your daughter, you come outside, right? Mm -hmm. Because you hear your husband and the Hembrys and them yes. over there yelling back and forth. And it's at that point you hear the obscenities targeted at your family and your husband slinging back, I'm going to dismember you or disembowel you, right? That's not exactly how he said it, but he said something to that effect. Got you like a fish? Which one was it? Got you like a pig? I don't remember that, no. Which one was it? Do you know? Let me think. It was... It was... I remember something about if something happens to my daughter, I'll kill you. Well, he said that too, right? In addition that's, to the other. That's what I remember. They were nasty both ways, right? It was nasty. Right. Your husband was nasty. They were nasty. This other William fellow, I don't know, was he nasty? Mm, I don't know. I'm sorry. Right. Very good. So that event happens, and then you petition for the injunction. We did. And we, we talked a little bit about the injunction hearing. Both parties filed for them. The injunctions were dismissed. Yes. In that period of time, though, your husband's weapons were removed from the house, right? They were. Okay. And what type of weapons did your husband have? I'm not very good with that sort of thing. Um, some type of handgun. Okay. Did he have any rifles or was it just handguns? I believe there was a rifle. And we know there was at least one handgun, right? Was there more than one handgun? I want to say yes. And so the, the weapons are removed from the home, and then ultimately they come back into the home. They when did. did. When did they come back into the home? It was after the injunction hearing. Was it the same day? Mm, it might have been the same day. Okay. So that evening, your husband would have come home, and then his father would have brought them back? That's not the order in which, well, yes, that's what happened. We came home. And the police had come, and yes, the guns came back. The police came because you were getting the guns back? No. The police came because they were laughing? The pol I, it's, I don't believe we were the ones who called the police that day. Right. But they told us we needed to arm ourselves. Right. And now when you came home that day, they were clearly angry. When I say they, I'm referring to the, the Hembrys, the Blakes, the Picciors. They were upset, right? The 29th, I'm sorry. 
the day of the injunction. Oh, so you don't, the dates mean nothing to you, right? I'm so sorry. No, that's fine. Look. The dates mean nothing. So the day of the injunction hearing, so we'll use events rather than dates. The day of the injunction hearing, when you came home, they were clearly upset. Well, when you came home, they were happy, right? They were laughing. Yes. And then later on in the day, they appeared to be angry and upset, right? Um, they didn't appear to be upset until the argument occurred. Okay. And what argument was that? Where, I don't know, that was, give me a second. You're blending your days, I think. Yes, I am. Right. Um, one second. I don't, I don't remember them being upset. I, I know they called the police on us, but I don't remember why that day. But I do remember the police coming to speak to us. There were a couple other events um, that I wanted to talk to you about, and they involved the dogs. And the first one I want to talk to you about is when you come home one day and you see a dog print in your front yard. Do you remember that? Um, I do not exactly remember it, but it was in my notes that you just showed me. Okay. D did that, remember, that refresh your memory? Not exactly. What I'm interested in, though, in that particular event, though, that's the time that Sergeant House came to your residence. Do you remember that? Do you remember him? Mm-hmm. I do. And he actually came in your house, right? He did. And he, at that point, asked to, he looked at your surveillance system. Did he? Didn't he? Mm, I don't remember that. <laughs> to be clear, what I want you to do, I don't want you to read from that. Okay. okay? I want you to read it quietly to yourself. If you remember sufficiently to testify from your own memory, I want you to tell me that. If you cannot, I want you to tell me you cannot, okay? I do remember the video with the dog. I, and I remember Sergeant, or is it Sergeant House coming to our house, but I don't, I don't remember him watching the video but he must have. Well, only you would know, right? So either way, he came to your house, and then he went and told, told them, keep your dog locked up, right? He, he, yeah, he told them to keep him on a leash outside. And that particular video that you either showed him or you reviewed yourself was basically his dog getting out and basically running amok in the neighborhood, right? Well, I don't know what he said to the dog, but... But you saw him trying to get him, and the dog was running away, right? I saw, I, I heard on the video him calling the dog. Right. He did not make an effort to retrieve the dog. And the dog basically ran down lane, right? Um, that, that sounds right. Ran away. Dog ran away. Yes, that sounds right. All right. And then there was another incident involving the dogs in which your husband was walking your dog in front of the house. Yes. Yes. And the dogs come running out of either the Picior or the, I'm not sure if it was the Blake residence or the Hembry residence, but they come running out. They did. And also in that video is two other people running out, chasing the dogs, right? I believe so. And the police were called in that incident, right? They were. And that was Officer Candia Roman came out that time. Okay. Do you remember her? I do remember her. And she actually came into your house and retrieved the video of that incident, right? Oh, yes. Yes, she did retrieve that video. Right. And that would have been the times that you called and said there was videos available and 
Titusville looked at them, right? And what? And Titusville Police Department looked at them, right? They didn't look at all the video. Well, they didn't look at 30 days worth of well, the house that day, right? No, they looked at that, I believe. The event that you were calling about. Um, I, I believe it was that event, and I'm not sure who reviewed it. Okay. All right, so when you told Mr. Eiseminger that they never looked at your video or collected the video, you just forgot. Well, I can say I don't know who looked at the video. I know she looked at the video. And she actually collected it. She took it. But I am not aware of anyone else looking at the video. The, the conduct that you're describing, other than the, the threat towards your daughter and the threat at your house that happened on the same day when your husband and this William fellow, William Smith, the other neighbor? I believe that's his last We're engaged in that, basically trying to kick the Hembrys out of the neighborhood. Um, so when, other than those two things, the conduct that you're really talking about that was bothersome to you was obscenities, right? They're just being vulgar, name calling, and beeping of the horn, right? They would lean on their horns in the neighborhood. They would and drive through and beep at each other, that kind of stuff? I can't say they were beeping at each other. At nothing, basically, right? I, I believe they were making the noise at us. Right. But regardless, the, it was horn honking in their cars. It was. Right. But then after the 29th, that's when things ramp up after your husband gets physical with Mr. Hembry. Right? That's what I think you said before. Okay, yes. So it was after the injunction hearing? After the hearing. All right. Let's talk about the 2nd. Okay, do you remember that day? Yes. September 2nd. Um, you were out to dinner, you went to your parents for dinner, and then you came home, right? Yes. When you came home, you... Same car or separate car? I was unclear there. I think we rode together in the same car. But whatever the video has will we'll show that, right? It should, yes. Okay. And it was the whole family. When I say the whole family, it was you, your son, Mr. Woodward, and Ava. Yes. And when you get home, is there anyone else there? Yes. Who else is there? My in-laws were there. Okay. Did they meet you there? Or did they come from where you came from? They did not come from where we came from. They had they were they met us there, I guess. And what, do you remember what time it was when you got home? I'm sorry, I don't remember. But the video would have that. On oh, it. I'm sure. And what do you do when you get home? Do you stay outside? Do you go inside? What do you do? Uh, we went inside. Who's we? Oh, I'm sorry. I went inside with the children. I'm not sure what everyone else did. And when you got home, was there anything going on that had your attention? Yes. What was happening? Uh, the neighbors were all out in their yard and um, carport area. Um, you could... There was a lot of them. There was a lot of people. And they had music playing. Yes. <laughs> Just, you need to let her finish I'm her sorry, response, Jim. please, before you ask your next question. Just trying to help along. I'm sorry, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, there were several people at the house. <laughs> the... People that you would describe as being, I'm going to describe them, you didn't describe them, as extra people to the residence. Because the people that are normally there are who? The Hembrys. So Gary Hembry, Kim Cast, so we'll call them the Hembrys. The Blakes, right? So Kerry Blake and Bruce Timothy Blake. And then Roger Picior and his girlfriend, right? Yes. Who else is there besides them? Just 
Overrule. You can answer that. Who else was there? Besides, the, yeah. Okay, well, their children were all there. Okay. There were several other uh, friends there that had been coming by for some time. I recognize them, even though I don't know all their names. Okay. Now, when you say friends, friends of what we'll call the, the adults or friends of what we'll call the children? Okay, I will say friends of the adults. Okay. And the ages of the children we're talking about, do you know? Of? That, you, that were outside when you got home. The ages of the children? It was yeah, just their... The, not, the, not all their ages. Bad question. Okay. The youngest to the oldest, what would you say? I, I don't know. It was their children. Okay. All right. So you come home, you go inside immediately. Pretty quickly. Do you ever go back outside? I don't remember if I did. And what do you do when you're inside? Take care of the children, get them ready for bed. Do you give your son a bath? I probably did. I don't remember specifically, but. Um, now, the whole time you're in the house, you can hear them. Yes or no? Yes. Uh, are there moments in time when you can't hear them? Yes. Okay. What's the longest you say you went when you couldn't hear them? Oh, I don't know. I don't think I was specifically listening for that. Okay. Where was your husband during this time when you first get home? I believe he came inside with me. And your in-laws, do they stay? Yes, they stayed for a little while. How long do you think they stayed? I'm not sure exactly. Did they leave before or after the children went to bed? Um, honestly, I don't know. I was pretty caught up in just trying to take care of the children. Do you remember anything happening when the parent, your in-laws left? And I don't remember when they left. And approximately what time would you say you went to bed? It was later than usual. What would usual be? Um, I usually went to bed about 10, well, 9.30 or 10. Actually, at that time, I was getting up very early in the morning. So I, went, I usually went to bed about 9. But it was, I know it was later than that. I'm sorry, I don't know exactly. At some point through the evening, you had a conversation with your husband, though, about going and staying at his parents' house, right? Yes. You wanted him to go stay there because you were worried about him. I wanted us to go, all of us to go stay there. All right. I want to talk to you about your concerns about this whole process from the very beginning, okay? And what I want to talk to you in terms of is... The thing that was really concerning you was that you knew your husband was quick to anger, right? Somewhat. And so that you were concerned that something that like happened at the injunction hearing would continually happen if your husband was left alone, right? Mm, I would not say that's correct. Because it was, so there's, you have the situation at the injunction hearing where basically Gary's leaning against his car. You said he had this look on his face, and he says something, you don't know what, and your husband beelines for him, right? Yes. Okay. And then you have the situation where Gary takes pictures of your chickens, and your husband, again, beelines for him. 
That's not exactly correct. Well, how did it? How did it happen? There was conversation. He didn't just go out there and well, he go went after out Gary there. because he had a camera. He went out there. He was angry. He wanted to know why he was taking pictures of his chickens. That doesn't mean he was angry. I think you said he was angry. Did I say he was angry? I don't remember him being angry, but if that's what I wrote. But he, but he didn't just go out there and go after Gary because he had a camera. He went out there to ask him, what are you doing? But that was your concern all along, though, is that your husband was quick-tempered and that he doesn't always respond rationally. That, that was not my primary concern. But it's a concern you had, right? I would say it's a concern that, that I had. That your husband would respond irrationally to an emotional situation. In an, in a, I feel like my words are being used well, against I don't, me. I don't want to do that. But to that's, you. that's not what I said that, but that's not what I meant. That's not, it's not being told in the correct context. Well, I, I, I guess I, I want to understand. Okay, and I'm not trying to twist your words. I don't want to do that. But what I want to know is on more than one occasion in your writings and in your affidavits that we've looked at, you have made indications that your husband was quick-tempered, essentially. Sure. Have you previously said on any occasion that your husband was quick-tempered or quick to anger? Anywhere ever? as it relates to this particular case, in the time frame from August 5th through August 12th. We'll narrow it to there. I, I don't know. I don't know if I ever said that to anyone. Did you ever reduce it to writing in any way to I, provide it to someone? Overrule, you can answer. I'm sorry, can you say it again? Did you ever memorialize that in any, any way? I don't know. I, don't, I gave over all my notes, right. and I haven't looked at them. In... Okay, I don't know is a fair answer. I'm going to show something to you and ask if that refreshes your memory as okay. you're doing that. Approach the witness. I would like you to look at that. I don't yes. want you to read it out loud. I want you to review it. Okay. And when your memory is refreshed as to whether or not you ever memorialize that your husband is quick to anger, his memory is refreshed. So, yes, I did say that. Well, let's, is your memory refreshed? I don't want to know if... Apparently, it's there. I want to know. Let me, well, let me be clear on the process. If they're asking you to refresh your recollection, if you would please look at the document. Okay. Once you've had a chance to look at the document, respond as to whether that refreshes your recollection or not. But don't read from the document. In fact, if you would just turn it over, that would okay. be helpful. Okay? Is your memory refreshed? Yes. Okay. Had you ever done that before? Had I do you ever... remember? Do you remember feeling that way that your husband was quick to anger? Yes. Okay. What about impulsiveness? Controlling his impulsiveness. Yes. You have. You you agree that he has that issue? Yes. Ma'am, thank you. I don't have any further questions. Fine, leave it or fine, move it, please. Okay. Redirect. Thank you. Mr. I want to start with the concept. Several times during the state's questioning, <clears throat> they made the reference uh, to the back and forth. Did you ever see your husband initiate any conflict? Overrule. Can, can you say it again? Did you ever see your husband initiate any conflict with the Hembry-Hickey-Or-Blake gang? I did not. 
you did see your husband react at various times to them initiating contact, didn't you? I did. Now, do you consider that back and forth or a response to what they're talking about? Uh, I would consider it reacting to what's being said. Okay. Now, the day that you heard um, Carrie Blake make these threats against your daughter and your family as a whole, were you aware of the fact that Kim Cast had previously made them earlier? Sustained. Did you ever hear Kim make similar comments before Carrie adopted them and made them? No. <clears throat> you were in the house or just before you heard Carrie Blake say that, correct? I was outside for I thought you had testified. Sorry. I'll rephrase. Okay. Kim, you had testified that just before you heard Carrie make these comments, you were in the kitchen and then walked out. Oh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, Mr. Woodward, your husband, was already down there when you were in the kitchen, correct? Yes. Okay. As a matter of fact, his involvement was reacting to threats by Mr. Picky or against Mr. Smith. Sustained. Well, the state asked you about him getting involved in a back and forth with Mr. Picky. You never observed any back and forth, did you? No, not exactly. Okay. Now, the state asked you about uh, some threats uh, for your husband to disembowel, gut, etc. I think you said that you recalled him saying something about, if my daughter is harmed, I'll kill you. Is that yes. correct? Was that after the threat <clears throat> to have your daughter sodomized by people? Yes, it was. Was it after the threat to have your house burned down while you slept? Yes. Is that something that he was engaging in a back and forth or a reaction to a horrible threat? I would say that's a reaction. Let's talk about your concerns about whether or not your husband was quick-tempered. He suffered from psych some psychological problems, is that correct? That's right. He was medicated for that. Yes. And he didn't deal well with stressful situations, is that fair? That's that, that, yes, that's fair. Now, whatever you may have put in your notes about your concerns of quick temper, you were doing that in the context of this constant harassment and pressure that he was being placed under by the Hembry gang, isn't that true? Yes. Now, you're not quick-tempered, are you? No. You had problems dealing with that stress as well, didn't you? Yes. We, <clears throat> your neighbors, you didn't have concerns about them being quick-tempered, uh, quick did you? Said the uh, crows? You ever have any concerns that they are quick-tempered people? Not that I saw. Okay. But they had problems dealing with the stress that they were subjected to by this gang. Didn't they? That I'm aware of, yes. Even Mr. Smith, William Smith, apparently he had so much problem that he wanted him out of the neighborhood, correct? Yes. Is he quick-tempered? Not that I ever saw, no. Okay. So whatever they were doing was causing a lot of people's problems, whether or not they had problems coping with stress and suffered from the problems. Was your husband the only person that you were concerned about reacting? Overruled. You can answer, ma'am. I'm sorry, can you say it again? Was your husband the only person that you were concerned about that might react to this abuse they and you were being subjected to? N no. 
Now, was your husband concerned about your husband's temper your major concern during this year, this time period? No. What was your major concern? The safety of my family. Safety of your family vis-a-vis -vis who? Who were you concerned was a threat to your family? I was very concerned about all of them. As uh, again, a, I'm sorry. All of them as oh, who? I'm sorry. I was concerned about Gary and Roger and Kim and Carrie and Bruce and even the kids. I was concerned that they would harm us. Now, again, I want to make sure I understand the sequence because the state got into it. I believe that you had indicated on direct that when you first brought your concerns about Kim's cat <coughs> children bullying Ava and Ethan, that she reacted appropriately. Is that correct? She yelled at them. She told them to stop. Yes. But after August 5th, and I understand you're not real great on dates, but after the, the problems and the relationship changed, she changed her tune again. Is that correct? She did. And that's the sequence of the events where she was standing in her driveway and relating what you had told the jury earlier. Is that yes. correct? And yes. what was that again? What did she say when she was standing in her driveway? Uh, we were standing in her driveway, and she said she would have, she would tell those kids to torment my daughter until she could not function anymore. Did they torment your daughter after that? Yes. On an everyday basis? Yes. Did the children ever call you names? I don't remember if they did or not. Okay. Now, did I understand your testimony correctly? You're saying that it was after the police were called by someone other than yourself that the police came over to speak with you and advised your family to arm themselves to protect them against the Embry, Picky, or Blake gang. I'm actually repeating her question, her answer. I want to make sure I had it correct. Overruled. Did you understand the question? Yes. Um, you did not call the police, correct? We did not call them that day, no. But as a reason, they spoke with that group, correct? Yes. Then they came over and spoke with you. Yes. And that's when they told you to arm yourself? They did. Right after talking with the Hambry Picky or Blake gang? They did, yes. Nothing further. Any recross? Thank you very much, ma'am. You may step down. Thank you.